Hi guys! Sorry for the waiting period between the last video and this one. I managed to catch a really bad cold and I'm only just recovering, so I might still sound a little bit nasally. Hopefully it's not too bad. This is going to be a quick video on Redux. I'll keep it simple because I want this to simply serve the purpose of comparing how Redux works versus how React, Reuse, Reducer and Use Context work. The similarities and differences should be very clear. Let's get started. Same drill, npx create react app, and then whatever you want to call this practice project. I'm going to call mine Redux store. For this one, I'm not going to set up the shop front as I did with the use reducer and use context video. We've already done that and it's not going to be very different with use reducer. So I'll just jump straight to the checkout page and save us all some time. Once the React project is set up, let's install Redux Toolkit. As you can see from the Redux website, the Redux Toolkit was created to simplify the Redux process. So let's install that alongside React-Redux. And of course, Tailwind. We'll clear up our workspace a little bit and then get started. Right, Redux. First of all, let's create a folder called Redux and we'll set up a store in that folder. The store in this sense is not going to be the design of our online glasses shop. Rather, it's the storage for where the current Redux application state lives. Let's configure the store first. Configure store is a Redux toolkit solution to simplifying the configuration process because a lot of people felt that the configuration of the Redux store was too complicated previously. So we import it first from Redux toolkit. Then we create the store by passing in a reducer. This is the first step of setting it up. And let's leave it here for now because we also need to set up the provider. So we go to the uppermost level of our app and insert the provider. I think we previously did it within our app.js. Another way of doing it is in our index.js, which is the parent file of app.js. And wrapping the provider around our app like this, just below React strict mode, it does the same job. In our provider, we need to pass down the Redux store that we've just created so that we can use it later. So far, so good. Then we need to create a new folder called Features. You can call it other things, of course, but the Redux standard practice is to call it Features. 
which will contain our basket slice. Slice is the Redux term for reducer function for whatever feature you're building. And since we're doing the basket feature, our basket slice will be handling our reducer function for the basket checkout logic. So to recap, a slice is a collection of Redux reducer logic and actions for a single feature in your app. It's a slice of state. I like to think of it in pizza terms. If an app is a pizza, each slice is a feature with state management involved. The slice is just everything that makes up that one slice of pizza, that one feature with state changes. Naturally, we import create slice from Redux Toolkit. Then we can set up our initial state. We'll have products, amount and total. Next, we initiate our Redux create slice function, which accepts an object of reducer functions a slice name and an initial state value. We'll give this the name of basket and we've just written out the initial state value so we can just drop it in here like this. We'll add the reducer functions in a bit. Once that's done, this create slice function then generates a slice reducer with corresponding action creators and action types automatically. If that doesn't make sense yet, it should become clearer by the end. So don't worry so much about the sentence for now. Let's focus on the coding. Let's export default our basket slice.reducer. Now that we have our basket slice reducer, let's go back to our store and build it out a little bit more. We import our basket slice reducer from our features. Because it's export default, we can call it a different name when we import it. To make it easy and clear, let's import it as basket reducer. In our reducer object, we can just call it basket and the basket will be our basket reducer. Now let's take a quick break and build out some of the components. So create a folder called components, then add a file called navbar. Let's add it into our app.js so we can actually see it. Just like how we had it for our previous React use reducer and use context store, we'll have a home and a basket. And I'll style it exactly the same as before. Then let's introduce use selector from React Redux. This use selector hook lets our component extract whatever piece of data that it needs from the Redux store state. To demonstrate, we have an amount key and value in our initial state object and thereby our reducer store, right? So down here, we can tap into that by const amount equals use selector. And then in our parentheses, we have store and store.basket.amount. To display it, we just need to replace zero with amount in curly braces. And you can see it still displays as zero because our initial state is set as zero and we haven't updated any states yet. To show that it's all hooked up, if we change the initial value of amount to two in our initial state object, you can see that our display up here for basket has now changed from zero to two. That's pretty cool.
Now let's get some glasses into our project. I'm taking the data from the previous data that we had and just pasted it here in our data.js file. To add an additional feature in this project, let's show how many of the same type of glasses a user has added to the basket and allow the user to add or remove an amount by clicking on add or plus sign. So we'll add in a property of amount and they'll start off as one because each time we add a pair of glasses into our basket, we want it to increment by one. And when we remove it, we want to decrease it by one. So we just add it as an additional property here in our data like this. If we go back to our basket slice.js, we can import our data and set our products as our data. Like this. The next step is to create our basket products component and a product component. Let's add our basket products component to our app.js file so that we can see it. Then in our basket products component, we can just use use selector to retrieve the products. Along with our products, we want the amount and total as well. So const products total amount equals use selector parenthesis store store.basket. We then map our products into each product. The key we've now mentioned quite a few times. Because we'll be adding and deleting items, it's better to use something other than the index as the key. You can use the UUID package to generate a unique key, or if you want to avoid installing additional packages, you can get creative like this. We then pass down all the information we'll want to display. So the name, price, image, and amount. In our product file, we receive it, display it, and style it.
fantastic. Because we want to try out adding and removing an item from our basket this time, let's set up the buttons. There we go. Now we can get to the fun part, the reducer functions. The way that the Redux create slice works, as we mentioned previously, is that once you've defined a name for this slice, written an object that has some reducer functions in it, it will generate the corresponding action code automatically. What does that mean in reality? So in basketslice.js, in our Redux create slice function, we can add our reducers now, which will be an object containing our specific reducer functions. The first one we can do is to increase the amount. It will take in the state and payload. Remember, payload is just a fancy word for information being carried. And we can increase the amount by setting item as state.products.find and if that item name is equal to the payload name, we take the amount of that item and increase it by one each time. We need to export this function for it to be used later. And we need to do a named export because as we discussed previously, a file can only have one default export and we've already used that up. So let's do export then the name of this function, which is increase amount equals basket.actions. We're exporting the action of increasing the item amount here. You see the difference between the React use reducer and use context example versus this Redux example now. How in our React use reducer and use context project, we had to do the whole switch statement and spell out the action type. And for each action type, we return the existing state plus anything we're changing through the payload. Here, we're short-circuiting all of that. Now, in our product file, let's import use dispatch from React Redux and import our increase amount function from our basket slice. Down here at the add button, on click, we can just do a callback function of dispatch. Increase amount and pass in the name. When we use the button now, you can see it's increasing that specific product by one because it's matching up the payload name, so the item we're clicking on, with the product name and increasing that amount of that product by the amount of one. That was what we told it to do in our increase amount function, and it's doing exactly that. Decrease amount is exactly the same, but instead of item.amount++, plus plus, it will be item.amount++. Minus minus. You can also do item.amount++ plus equals or minus equals one, or item.amount equals item.amount++ plus one, item.amount equals item.amount minus one. Any other method you prefer. My personal preference is the increment and decrement operator. You don't have to use it. And we can add it into our exported action here. Okay, cool. We've got the increase and decrease working. 
That was fairly painless, right? Especially after having done the use reducer and use context. I hope so anyway. Let me know. In our decrease button, we'll have to be aware of what happens when the amount is already at 1. At the moment, with no safeguarding, it can just decrease the number to negative infinity, which is not what we want to happen for an online store. What we want to happen is when the product amount is at 1, if we then decrease it to 0, we actually want to delete that product from our basket. We don't have that function yet, so for now, let's just say if the amount is greater than 1, we keep decreasing the amount. Otherwise, it will just stay on 1. Cool. Now, let's do the remove item function. Exactly how we did it before, we can take the state.products and filter out the relevant product. Add to our exported action. And on click of our remove button in our product file, we do a callback function and then dispatch the remove item reducer function, passing in the name. And down here, when we're decreasing the amount of the item by one, we can do an if statement. So if amount is equals to one, we dispatch the remove item function and return. Otherwise, we use the decrease amount function. You can do an if else statement here as well. This just shows a different way of writing an if statement. Substantively, it does the same thing for this particular scenario. Then let's do update total. We can get a bit clever with this now. We can actually handle the total amount and total price together. Here's how. We take the state, let amount equals zero, and let total equals zero to start with. Then for each product, we add an amount, which for each product, each time, it will be one. And we can also calculate each product's total as the amount of that item times the price of that item. Once that's done, we set the amount of that item as our local variable amount and same for total. Add it to our exported actions. This time, we can actually implement it in our app.js because each time a product's information changes, we can trigger the update total reducer function straight away with our React use effect hook. Here's what I mean. In our app.js, we do const products equals use selector and then in the parentheses store store.basket. And let's initiate the use dispatch function too from React Redux like this const dispatch equals use dispatch. In our use effect, we can just do dispatch update total. And we want the dependencies of the use effect to be products and dispatch. Because Redux is doing a lot of the heavy lifting with the state management, we actually don't have to do anything else for it to work. As I'm clicking, you can see the amount changing up here next to our basket, and you can see our total price changing. That's all. At first, it can be quite mystifying the first few times, like that meme where you don't quite understand why something is not working, but you don't quite understand why something's working either. But it'll click. As some finishing touches, let's just set the price to the correct decimal points with our to fixed method. Something else we can do is to display some text for when there are no items in a basket. In our basket products file, we can add a mount here and set up a ternary operator. 
and say if the amount is more than one, it will show the products with its relevant buttons and functions. Otherwise, we can show the message of your basket is empty. Maybe a sad face too. We can show the total regardless because it will just be zero when it's empty, which is quite reassuring for the user to see. And that's it. You should be able to extend your knowledge into how to add a product into your basket from your shop front if you create a shop front. You know how to add a reducer function, you know how to use a reducer function, and you know how to add a specific item because we did it in our previous video. So it should be really easy to piece together. You can see how Redux is a little bit of a learning curve, so I didn't want to do too much in our first try. If you want to dive more into Redux, you can have a look at Dave Gray's Redux playlist. It's much more complex and super detailed, very well explained. I don't want to repeat good material that's already out there, so please check it out if you want to understand more about Redux. And just as a final word, there are also other really good state management libraries out there other than Redux, like Recoil, Jotai, HookState, etc. To me, Redux is still a little bit too convoluted. I played around with Recoil the other day and really liked it. Maybe we can try it with our Next.js and TypeScript project in the future. Alright, that's all this time. See you next time.